close your eyes and watch your breath. Stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. Any other thoughts that come into the mind right now, you can just put them aside. We're trying to train the mind, which means developing good qualities. And thinking random thoughts is not developing good qualities in the mind. You want to focus your attention on one thing and stay there. That's the first lesson in training the mind. It's like training an animal. First lesson is stay. Don't move. And then the next lesson is how to move, the right places to move. In this case, you're moving the mind from just watching the breath to asking yourself, is the breath comfortable? Evaluate it. You can try long breathing for a while, then short breathing, and see which is better. Then you can try shallow breathing and deep breathing, see which is better. Fast, slow, heavy, light. Test things for a while. Because we're training the mind not just to be obedient, but also to see, to use its powers of judgment. So you start out with something simple and very direct and very close to you like this, your own breath. And then when there's a sense of comfort, how do you maintain that sense of comfort? Spread it around. Think of it spreading to different parts of the body as you breathe in, as you breathe out. And the mind will be more willing to want to stay. In the canon they give the image of an elephant that's been tra trapped in the forest, brought into the city to be trained. They have to tie it to a post, and of course the elephant's going to try to get away from the post. But then they play music for it and give it good food, and after a while it gets more and more used to being there. So you can create a sense of well-being here in the present moment. It's a lot easier to get the mind to be willing to stay. And then when it stays here, then you can watch its movements. You begin to see where it goes, why it's going, what it's looking for. And you begin to realize the problems you have in life are not necessarily things outside. It's the way the mind goes running out looking for things and creating a lot of trouble. So you have to train it to engage in the world in a skillful way, based on what we've learned from what we see as we meditate. So you want the mind to be both obedient and observant. That's when it's useful. It's like Again, it's like training an animal, when the animal is obedient but also intelligent. Then you can use the animal for all kinds of good things. So we train the intelligence by teaching the mind to be a good judge of what's skillful and what's not skillful inside. That way it causes a lot less trouble. And as the Buddha said in his very first teaching, the Four Noble Truths, the reason we suffer is not because of the world outside, it's because of our own greed, aversion, and delusion, our own ignorance, our own craving. So the problem is inside. This is where you've got to look. And as you're really observant right here, then the problems outside get less and less important. They don't weigh on the mind so much. It doesn't mean they go away. But when the mind is better trained, then it can deal with outside problems a lot more effectively. That way this practice is good for you and for the people around you. So this is why we come to the monastery to make merit. It's not just to be generous, but we also develop virtue and we also learn how to meditate, how to train the mind. Because all those practices are basically training the mind. Because that's our most important possession, and if it's not trained, it can cause a lot of trouble. If it is trained, then it's very useful. So work on training your own mind. And you'll find that it's a lot more useful for you, and it has a lot more to offer for you than if you just let it wander around as it likes. <laughs>